I'm going to show you how to do a common method bias test using the Harmon's single factor method in SPSS, the common latent factor method in Amos, and the marker variable method in Amos. To start, we're going to do a CMB on this beautiful model, but we're going to do it in SPSS. So you just go perform a factor analysis like you normally would with those variables. I've already got them set in there. But this time, when you extract, you want to extract a fixed number of factors. And you only want to extract one. So you're going to constrain the number of factors extracted to one. On rotation, usually you would choose Promax or whatever floats your boat. But this time, you're going to do no rotation. And then you run it. So only one factor is going to emerge. If this factor explains more than 50% of the variance, then we're in trouble. It looks like this one only explains 33% of the variance. So although that is a lot of variance to be explained by a single factor, it's not a majority, so we're probably OK. But just in case, we're going to go check out a common latent factor in Amos. The way to do a common latent factor in Amos is to add a latent variable just out here somewhere. We'll name it common factor. And then to add regression lines to every observed item in the model. So this common variable is going to determine the common variance among all the observed items in the model. So what kind of variance is commonly shared among all of them? Okay, don't miss any. Now this is a really nasty mess, so you may want to use your magic wand and just clean it up like that. The next thing you need to do before running this is you need to constrain all of these paths to be equal. So the way you do that, the easiest way, is to select all of them, first by zooming way in, because Amos is really sensitive, and then just select each one of these. Looks like I'm missing a couple. I missed a couple in there, so if you miss any, go back and make sure you get them. If you miss any, this, this won't run properly. There we go. And then double click one of them and constrain its regression weight to be A or B or some, some letter. Um, it's just setting it to, uh, it's just constraining it basically. Then drag properties. You're going to drag the parameter constraint. Just double click that A. Oop, there we go. Now they're all constrained to be A. Unselect, zoom back out, and run the model. Yes, go ahead and proceed with it uncorrelated. Looks like it did not run. The reason why is because we still need to constrain the variance in the common factor. Constrain it to one. And now run it. Proceed. Wahoo! It worked. And if we zoom in again, you can see that all of the regression weights here are negative 13. If you square that, you'll get the common variance. The common variance in this case would be about 2%, 13 squared, or 0.13 squared. Now, the additional test we can run to perhaps get a more accurate representation of the common variance is to add a marker variable, some variable from our model that is seemingly unrelated to the other variables in the model. <clears throat> so any variance that they actually shared would probably be due to some sort of common method bias. So we're going to add something called apathy. Name it apathy. I shall name it marker. And just in parentheses, apathy. And then give it its variables here. Name its error terms. 
and then don't forget to regress and constrain those regression lines to be A oops wrong one sorry this one just drag from any existing one over to here good and then don't forget to covary with the other latent variables and we're good to go run proceed and we get 0.09 we've decreased that common method bias down to about what is 0.09 that's uh, less than 1% at 0.081% common method variance and that's it